In this lesson, we'll look at how to find the domain and range of a relation, and we'll learn how to determine if the relation represents a function. So we need a few definitions. First of all, the definition of relation is a set of ordered pairs. And sometimes the set will be, you know, just a list of ordered pairs, but more often it will be an equation that we can use to generate our own uh, ordered pairs. We plug in an X and get out a Y, and we have an ordered pair. The domain simply means all the x values that can be used in the relation, and the, the range is all the y values that can be part of the relation. So there are those definitions, and let's go ahead and look at a relation and list the domain and the range. Here is our first relation, and it is simply a set of ordered pairs, and if I want to list the domain, I, I know that ordered pair means that the x values come first and then the y values. So the domain will be 1, 3, 2, negative 4. And I happen to list these in the order that they came in this list, but really any order is fine. You could put largest to smallest, smallest to largest, and the order is not important at all. And now for the range, I have 5, 7, and 6. And notice that I did not list the 5 twice because this just needs to include all the numbers that are part of the range. It really doesn't mean anything if you put the 5 down twice. So put each number down one time. So just a reminder, no particular order is required and we just list each number once. Now here is our definition for function. A function is a special relation in which each x value corresponds to exactly one y value. So I'm going to put a relation here and we're going to decide whether it is a function or not. Okay, so I want to see if each x value matches one y value only or if, each, if there are any x values that match more than one y value. So 3 corresponds to 7, and 3 does not correspond to anything else. 2 corresponds to negative 4, and 2 does not correspond to anything else. 5 corresponds to 8, and 6 corresponds to negative 4. So each x value, the 3, the 2, the 5, and the 6, correspond to only one y value. So therefore this can be a function. And I know you may be looking at the negative 4's here and saying, well wait, those correspond to more than one number, but remember those are y values. So it's okay for a y value to correspond to more than one x. What we can't have is for one x to correspond to more than one y. So this is a function. Each x value matches only one y value. Now look at this relation. The 1 corresponds to 2, 3 corresponds to 4, 5 corresponds to 6, but 5 also corresponds to 8. So this cannot be a function because the x value uh, creates two different y values. x equals 5 corresponds to both y equals 6 and y equals 8. So most often Functions and relations are not stated as a list of points like we've seen, but they're usually given as equations, such as this. y equals 3x plus 5 is a function because if we plug in an x value, uh, we'll multiply that x value times 3, we'll add 5 to it, that will give us one y value. So this is going to create um, a set of ordered pairs where every x generates one y, but if we look at x squared plus y squared equals 1, that's not a function. And to see why it's not a function, you have to solve this for y. So that's what I'm about to do here. If I uh, isolate the y squared term and do the square root of both sides, when I do the square root of both sides, it forces me to put in this plus minus. You remember that from when we learned this square root property. 
And so every x value I plug in here is going to generate a positive x, or sorry, a positive y and a negative y. Each x we plug in produces two y values, and therefore uh, this equation does not represent a function.